Right in the Atlantic Ocean between Iceland and Denmark lies a pretty unique place. The Faroe Islands are technically a self-governing community, but they're a part of the Kingdom of Denmark. In total, there are 18 individual islands that comprise the Faroe Islands. This isn't the biggest place in the world. A lot of the sites here, when you look at a map, may seem far away from each other, but the reality is if you have your own car you rented, you're never far away from the next site. Now, one thing to remember here in Faroe Islands is that weather can be unpredictable. That's putting it mildly. There's an old saying that's widely used here which says, if you don't like the weather, if the weather's bad, just wait five minutes and it'll be totally different. If you were like me and you didn't really know a lot about the Faroe Islands, this is the place that's got those turf roofed houses, so those grass houses. Also, the, the those cute little birds, the puffins, are, are known to be here in Faroe Islands. One very important point I want to make before we get into the fun part of the video is that obviously I'm not from the Faroe Islands. Please excuse me in advance for butchering any names of villages, attractions, towns, and cut me some slack if I don't get those 100% correct. I'm looking much more forward to seeing and experiencing these places than I am to saying them out loud. And I'm thrilled to be here. I'm happy to have you with me. And I'm looking forward to experiencing one of the most uniquely beautiful natural territories in the world. If you're looking for the most famous image in the Faroe Islands, look no further than Mulafosa. What you're seeing behind me is the famous waterfall just in front of the village of Gasadolor. Now, in terms of a good time to come here and see Mulafosa and Gasadolor, you may want to consider the same day that you arrive in the Faroe Islands or the same day that you leave. That's because this site is on the island of Vagar. Vagar is the same island that has the airport and if you're arriving it's only about 30 minutes drive from the airport so it's a pretty convenient spot to see right here when you arrive on Faroe Islands. One of the things that obviously stands out is just how dramatic the landscape is. You have the waterfall, you have the beautiful charming little village, you have the, the mountains with the fog and the clouds that move in and out. There's a reason why this spot is so famous. There's a reason why so many people come to visit Mulafasar because it, it provides such a beautiful and striking image right here on the coast of the Faroe Islands. Make sure to visit the village. The village is small and really charming. And there's a very convenient hiking path that takes you from the village, crossing bridges and streams to this viewpoint here, right on the cliff's edge. The further you get towards the sea, the better the view gets. If you keep going that direction, you're eventually gonna to get to a point where you see a sign that says, do not enter, and some really steep cliffs that go off down to really a rocky coast. To be honest, if you do go that direction, the view of the waterfall doesn't get that much better. Obviously, it goes without saying that Mulafasar is gonna be on your list of sights to see when you are in the Faroe Islands. It's probably the most famous tourist attraction here in Faroe Islands and when you come here you will quickly see why. Come to Mulafasar, visit the, the village of Gasadolor and you'll be very happy and glad that you did. On your way here to Gasa de Lourdes, you're going to see this sign indicating where you can find the waterfall. The walk itself from the village is, is pretty nice, it's short. When you do come here, make some time to walk around the village as well. It's really charming. There are 20 people 
that live here in the village full time. One thing that's interesting as you make your way over to the waterfall, you actually start to hear it. There's a loud kind of crashing sound with the water kind of crashing down into the sea. Depending on what time you come here, just uh, be prepared to wait out weather. When I first got here in the morning, the, the fog had set in and there wasn't anything to visible, but I stuck around and and as you're seeing now, the, the, the clouds opened up and I got incredible shots of Mula Fasar, of Gasa de Lourdes, of the of the mountain behind it. So if you do get here and you can't see much, just wait it out and it's like you'll have a great view. In the northernmost island of the Faroe Islands, there's a village. This village is called Viorayan. Viorayan is this beautiful, very picturesque village surrounded by water on, on both sides. And uh, one of the awesome things about this village is this hike that gives you a beautiful view. There are two mountains that surround the village. Villingard's Fall is the mountain that I've climbed right now to get the view of the cone-shaped mountain that you're seeing behind me, which is called Malinsfjall. Malinsfjall is obviously a very picturesque mountain. In fact, that cone shape reminds me of one of the beautiful spots that I visited in Iceland called Kukjufet. It's got the same type of shape to it. Also, the Kulin Mountains in the Isle of Skye, one of the mountains there had a, had a cone shape to it. One of the things I'd li I've liked a lot about coming in and visiting the villages here is to see the, the, the people who live here, to observe them. Many of them are farmers. You'll see, you'll see them with their families, kids on bicycles, playing soccer, going to school. I know it's probably novel for me, who's, who's a tourist from a big country, when you come to a, a, a place as small as Faroe Islands and they just happen to live in one of the most beautiful places on earth. One of the cool facts about the Faroe Islands is that you're never very far away from water. In fact, I think that at any point in time in the most center part of the islands, you're only about a mile or so from the sea on either side. And that's obviously what you're seeing here. A bit about the hike itself. The hike can really be as easy or as challenging as you'd like. What I mean by that is the hike starts at the very northern back end of the village. You just kind of go in that direction. There's a box there where you'll pay 200 to, to do the hike. You start climbing up Villingard's Fall, which is the direction that you're going. Even at the start of the hike, you're getting a really good shot at Melan's Fall, the mountain behind me. You. you could stop right there uh, and enjoy the view if you wanted to. But there are these blue cones that, are, that lead all the way up to the very top. You can go really as high as time and fitness permits. But at any point in time, you can just stop and observe this beautiful cone-shaped mountain behind me. So whether you wanted to do the full thing or just do as much as you can, you're guaranteed to have a really good view, which is good for people with uh, schedules that need to be flexible. This is essentially as far north as the road goes in this country. So when you're seeing the road behind me, it kind of snakes back and goes back the way you came. That's because there's no more land up north. You've made it up to the very, very north. But when you are here as well, you can check out the Orion a little bit more. And there's a beautiful white church down there. The village here is, is very, very pretty. And it's true, the higher you get, the, the prettier it, it becomes because you see the water on both sides and you're almost looking at the the peak of the cone-shaped mountain eye level, which is really, really cool. But even if you can't make it up to the very top, get as high as you can. Sit back, relax, enjoy the view, enjoy what is a very beautiful sight.
if you love fjords, you're gonna wanna make sure you come here. This is Quithammer. Quithammer is a very accessible hike that you can do after a very scenic drive. What makes this hike very accessible is that you drive most of the distance to get up here. Quithammer is located just above a small little mountain village called Funinger. The hike itself is pretty manageable. It's pretty steep, but it'll only take you about 15, 20 minutes. This is where you'll get that awesome view that you're seeing behind me of the fjord. The fjord is called Funingsfjord. It's one of the most beloved fjords in the entire Faroe Islands. Obviously, we're looking at the fjord here, which is beautiful, but once you're up here, you can get a perfect 360 degree view of the entire area. And really, it doesn't matter which way you look, you're gonna get a beautiful view, whether it's a, a mountain peak, a, a zigzaggy mountain road, a fjord, a, a body of water, it really is all up here. You have to know of the right spot to stop in order to get up and make the climb. The climb is straightforward, but you may miss it. You follow that gate all the way up. It's, it's pretty steep, but it's absolutely worth it, especially when you take into account it's not a very long hike and you're rewarded with a stunning view. If you are a mountain lover like myself, you probably can't do any better than coming to the Faroe Islands. Quithammer, I think, is an indelible image. When you think of Faroe Islands, you think of a fjord, you think of a mountain, a body of water, a beautiful vista with low-hanging clouds, and you have that all on display here. Fosa Waterfall is the biggest waterfall in the entire Faroe Islands. If you love and appreciate the beauty of waterfalls, and let's be honest, who doesn't? You'll want to make sure you stop here. It's about 140 meters from the top and a really cool and awesome sight as you're driving on the road on the way to Chernovic. What makes this waterfall unique is that it's split up into different sections. So here we are right now on the bottom section, but you can go up and take a hiking trail up to the second section. There's a section at the very, very top as well where the water cascades down. I couldn't find my way up to the very, very top, but you can explore these two sections without too much difficulty. In terms of how to get to this spot exactly, it's not too tricky, but you have to pay attention to a specific spot to stop on the road. You can just type in Fosa, a waterfall into your Google Maps or on your way to the village, the picturesque village of Chernovic, about five minutes before you reach the village is where you see Fosa. It's just right off the road, right off the highway as you're driving down. There's really no parking lot or designated parking area. You can see the waterfall, but there's really no clear area where to stop. And since the road here is just kind of one single lane, you wanna be careful and not park in the middle of the road. Luckily, there is a turnout right at the spot where the waterfall kind of jumps out on the road. That's where I parked my car and you can park your car there and make your way back up to the waterfall. You'll see a path that will take you up to the first section and then you're going to want to go opposite of the waterfall towards Toshan to go up to that second section. You see a lot of waterfalls while you are here in the Faroe Islands. Fosa probably is one of the most unique because it is cascading into different sections. It's beautiful and likely you're on your way to visit Chernovic anyway. And as you are on your way up to Chernovic, you might as well stop here and get a beautiful shot of the multiple section cascading waterfall because it's definitely worth your time. It doesn't take too much time to explore. The hike is pretty short and straightforward and you're rewarded with a beautiful waterfall. And who doesn't love that?
nestled into the northernmost portion of the island of Stramoy is a village that is immediately recognizable the moment you see a picture of it, and that is the, the village of Chernovic. Chernovic is one of the most beautiful villages in all of Faroe Islands. There are cottages and houses right on the right on the shores of a black sand beach. It's a very popular vacation spot and the home of some excellent hikes and, and viewpoints. It's this unbeatable location which makes Chernovic one of the most popular sites here in the Faroe Islands. People from all over Europe, from all over the world, come here to enjoy this view that you're seeing right here behind me. The people here are also very nice. Of all the villages I've observed, Chernovic probably is the most picturesque. What you're seeing here is a uh, living, breathing postcard. It's, it's awesome, so it's definitely worth your time to come and visit. It is so worth coming out here to uh, enjoy the beach, whether you like to surf, whether you like to hike, whether you like to just observe beautiful sea cliffs and sea stacks. This is the place for you. Consider coming to Chernovic. Try and pair it with your trip out to see the Fossa waterfall since they're very close to each other. And if you haven't seen Saxon yet, you could hike from Chernovic to Saxon or vice versa and see two of the most terrific villages in, in all of Faroe Islands. With views like this, it's no wonder why visitors flock to this specific village in Faroe Island. And when you do come here, you're not gonna wanna leave. Any trip to the Faroe Islands may very well be incomplete if you don't come to the village of Saxon. The Valley of Saxon is one of the most recognizable and picturesque parts of the entire Faroe Islands. Please excuse me for being backlit, but I wanted to just show you what the valley looks like as the sun is setting here in Saxon. Today the weather is really, really nice. Hardly any wind. And the only thing you can hear is the water from the waterfalls. And you have this view here of the valley, which is just so gorgeous. Saxon is a village in the northwestern part of the island of Stramoy. Saxon, probably more than any other part of the Faroe Islands, is the city when you think of like the, the turf roofed houses. So you have those turf roofed houses here. You have the recognizable white church in the center of the village. There are a few waterfalls that I've noticed since I've been here. You'll, you'll, you'll notice a waterfall right in the, the start of the village when you get here, kind of by the white church. But as you go farther out into the valley, you'll see an even bigger waterfall that trickles down into the lagoon. One of the things that I've really enjoyed about Saxon is just how green it is. It is so green. You come here. Now I'm here in July. So I think during the summer months, green is the more prominent color. Whereas if you came in spring or autumn, it may be more orange or brown. It's worth noting that there are places in Saxon that as a tourist, you, you aren't allowed to go. You just, it's for residents only. All area here in Faroe Islands is privately owned, which means that Saxon is owned by someone who's giving folks like me, tourists, the permission to come here and to enjoy the beautiful parts of the Faroe Islands which means that you'll have to pay fees in certain spots. But more than just paying fees, being respectful of the areas is important. As some parts of the village are for residents only, but trust me when I say there's more than enough here as a tourist for you to come here and enjoy everything, all the nature, all the animals. It's beautiful and it's definitely worth coming here to see. You're gonna get postcard worthy images. Come out here, have a seat and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful village.
The hike up to Kalura Lighthouse may very well be the highlight of your entire trip to the Faroe Islands. The viewpoints up here on, on Kalura Lighthouse are really out of this world. There are three signature spots that you can come to get really good views of the lighthouse. The first one is going to be a cliff's edge that's probably the most immediate spot right when you come up from the hike and it's going to be more towards the sea north. One thing that all three of these spots have in common is that they're all extremely steep and a little bit perilous. So if you are afraid of heights, then it probably won't be your favorite thing to do. My favorite viewpoint is the one you're looking at right now with the, with the large mountain peak just behind. Now to get this viewpoint, you're going to want to go, I think, northwest, turn around, and get the shot of the lighthouse with the mountain in the back. You really can't go wrong in terms of a viewpoint up here. It all is beautiful and if you're lucky enough to have good weather like I'm having today, you're going to want to spend all day up here. Color Lighthouse is on the island of Kalsoy. Kalsoy can only be accessed via ferry, but the ferries themselves are not very big, especially if big trucks are getting on. Um, you're going to want to check the, um, the ferry timetables just to make sure you can get a spot. I got here at the earliest one in the peak season around 6.40 in the morning. Um, but apparently these do fill up and you want to just get here earlier so that you can get over to the island in time. The ferry ride's about 20 minutes and uh, tight quarters you can choose to either stay in your car or outside. Whatever time spot you get to in the ferry, you're going to want to get there early, whether it's 6.40 or, or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Just make sure to, to check what time it is, get there early and you'll be glad you did. But if you are driving another a word of warning is that you want to be prepared for some single lane roads and for some uh, tunnel driving that's a little claustrophobic and, and intimate. If you don't know what that is, it's basically when you get into some of these tunnels, there's single lane roads, which means that you're becoming head on with another car. There are turnouts every so often. Another benefit to getting here early is that you pretty much have the mountain to yourself. Right now, I haven't seen a soul. It's just me and a whole bunch of goats and sheep. And they're pretty good company, to be honest. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice being up here alone and being very, very secluded. Even though the hike to get up to Color Lighthouse on the island of Kalso is pretty straightforward, it's going to require a bit of planning to get to the starting point of the hike. The, the village Trollanes is the starting point of the Color Lighthouse hike. This red door, I guess, is northwest of the village, and this is the start of the Color Lighthouse trek. When you come through this red gate, you may be tempted to take a left because that's where the fence that leads up the mountain goes, but that's the opposite direction of where you want to go. Come through the gate, turn right. You'll see kind of a path that's been created here by all the foot traffic. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where you turn the mountain and you're going to climb with the sea on your right. So as you ascend, the sea will be on your right. Parking here in Trollanes is pretty limited. So like I've said before, if you can get here early, that's going to be your best bet. After the hike, you can come back down here, grab lunch, enjoy the view here. Just remember that on your way back, you're going to have to drive the same road back to the ferry station to get off of Kolsoy. If you wanted to make this an all-day affair, you certainly could and spend your entire day here on the island of Kolsoy because there are a lot of things to see here. So like most things, when you do travel here in the Faroe Islands and just in general, it's up to you. The more you plan, uh, the more you're going to be able to do in a shorter amount of time to maximize your trip. And if you're like me, where you don't have, you know, weeks here or even a week, I'm here three and a half days, doing something as epic as the Color Lighthouse and being able to do things later really helps. And that's another good reason to come here in July too, because you have all the daylight to go and, and see something else after you're done with the hike. It's just stunning. I, I don't know what else to say other than it's it's just a really beautiful spot. You'll be so glad you made this this journey. If you can plan it out in advance to get a ferry to come over here on one of your good weather days you'll be so glad you did because color lighthouse deservedly has such a high reputation as being one of the most famous tourist spots in the faroe islands and you will quickly find out why when you come here
In the limited time I had here in the Faroe Islands, I can't tell you how impressed I was with everything I saw. This charming place in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is home to some of the most beautiful natural sights that I've seen in my life. Even though this is a small country, there's obviously a lot here to do. And in the limited time I had, I, I couldn't see everything. There were a number of, of things that I couldn't do while I was here, whether it was weather or time, it didn't allow for it. But that just gives me a good excuse to come back. And it gives you a good excuse to come here for the first time if you haven't already. This place is almost like a hidden gem. It probably doesn't get mentioned in the same breaths as some of the major tourist destinations in Europe or the world, but it should be. What you're seeing here really does remind you of, of what you see in a storybook or, or a fairy tale with the mountains and, and the green lush grass and, and the sea. If you are a nature lover, if you are a, a hiker, if you're a photographer, or just someone who loves to appreciate and admire beautiful sights, come to the Faroe Islands, come and enjoy what may be one of the most beautiful places on earth.